Total War Three Kingdoms ask you to take on the role of one of 11 legendary warlords and unite China under your banner. But to help you decide who to play first, I'm going over each starting warlord to showcase their unique personality and their story so far in 190 CE, and then revealing how it all panned out for them historically. Today's character for Warlord Legends is Lu Biao, the aristocrat. The Gentleman of the Han, Lu Biao is known as one of the Eight Geniuses, a group of scholars who distinguished themselves during the late Han era. As governor of Jing province, he's a smart and charismatic man, with an appreciation for etiquette, nobility, and the finer things in life. A man seldom ruffled, Lu Biao demonstrates his aristocratic pedigree through stable governing. At his core, Lu Biao is a company man, and though the Han Empire crumbles around him, he sees it as his duty to continue serving to pursue peace and restore prosperity at all costs. Because for Lu Biao, it's not just policy, it's family, as he's a direct descendant of the Han emperors. Lu Biao has spent a lifetime mastering the complexities of aristocracy. An accomplished administrator and a traditionalist at heart, his goal is to preserve the status quo and hopes that the chaos and war around him will abate and a reason will again prevail throughout China. But change also brings opportunity. Lu Biao is already an exceptional governor and has potential to be much more. But that's only if he can adapt to this era of conflict. All he would need to do is exert his authority over Xiang Yang Commandery. And using that as his foundation, it's only a matter of time until he can restore peace to all of China and bring permanent unity. Lu Biao's focus on intelligent governing and academia defines his play style. With a calm and steady hand at the wheel, Lu Biao offers a public order bonus to his lands while he's faction leader, and a satisfaction boost to all characters under his control. His peaceful commandery offers a safe haven to nobles and gentry alike, and as such, he attracts those who also value sophistication, knowledge, and harmony. This grants Lu Biao unique scholarly court positions, the student, the tutor, and the scholar. Each increases experience gain for all characters in his faction. And his unique building chain, the lodging and the tea gardens, ensure your characters will level up even faster. If used well, Lu Biao's bonuses to character growth allow you to develop high-ranking generals faster than any other warlord, meaning that although he doesn't have a significant military force at the outset, his generals can still hold their own and will quickly outpace their rivals. Lu Biao also starts in a relatively secure diplomatic position, being the master of two vassals, Kai Mao and Huang Zhu. These vassals occupy land to the south of him and offer valuable support in shoring up his southern borders, as well as a buffer to the expansionist-minded Sun Jin, a threat that will have to be dealt with lest the tiger grows too strong to tame. However, at the start of the game, Lu Biao's no spring chicken either. So when playing as him, you'll need to be careful who you select as your heir. Your sons, though your flesh and blood, sadly don't show the same level of academic promise as their father did at their age, and you may need to look outside your current family to secure your legacy. Guan Xi is a new concept for the Total War series, a system based around ever-changing interpersonal relationships. And each warlord will start out with a specific Guan Xi that must be tended and mended to grow strong. Lu Biao begins the game with the support of his close friend, Wang Jung, a brave and wise general. Despite his age, Wang Jung remains a capable warrior and one of the greatest archers in all of China, something he's key to prove whenever the opportunity presents itself. While Wang Jung's age makes him unsuitable to select as an heir, Lu Biao also has the support of his sons, Liu Qi and Liu Kong. However, it is known that Lu Biao puts more trust in Huang Zhong than either of them. For his starting position, the game begins with Lu Biao in Jingyang Commandery as governor of Jing province, an office given to Lu Biao by the great Han Emperor himself. But with rebels rising up all around his territory, Lu Biao needs to put his foot down. Only when he's restored order to his home can he think of extending it to others. But even this piece will be rocked by his first dilemma. Lu Biao's dilemma starts when Yun Shou, the leader of the coalition, secretly orders him to take the imperial seal back from Sun Jin. So you'll have to make a choice, accept Yun Shou's request and attack Sun Jin, bringing a war with Sun Jin and his ally Yuan Shu, or ignore Yuan Shou's request 
and risks the anger of the most powerful warlord in the north. Ignoring Yuan Shou means that your starting situation is calmer, but your potential enemies will have the ability to grow in strength as well. Attacking Sun Jin, on the other hand, will mean a difficult start, but if you can ambush him before he returns home, you'll kill the tiger before he even has time to roar. But historically, Liu Biao's ambush of Sun Jin sparked a lifelong war with the Sun family, culminating in Sun Jin's invasion of Zhang Yang. Trapped in his own capital, Liu Biao was only saved by his daring vassal, Huang Zhu, who broke free of the enemy lines and led the headstrong Sun Jin into a trap. But Sun Jin's sons would not let the death of their father go unavenged, and 20 years of conflict followed that left Liu Biao so focused on the south of China that he ignored the growth of a new threat in the north, Cao Cao. As the main power of central China, Liu Biao tried to remain a neutral party. But after the defeat of Yuan Shuo by Cao Cao in the year 200, refugees fled south seeking a safe haven. Among them was Liu Biao's distant cousin, Liu Bei. Unwilling to turn away family, Liu Biao welcomed his esteemed cousin with open arms and saw in him a power with which he might be able to oppose the North. Cao Cao would not forget this slight. Once he completed his unification of Northern China, he turned South. Liu Biao called on Liu Bei to help defend his realm, knowing that he couldn't do it alone. And on the eve of a battle, at this turning point in history, Liu Biao died of an unknown illness and disappeared from history. Liu Kong, though, lived up to his father's expectations and surrendered to Cao Cao without a fight. His other son, Liu Qi, fled with Liu Bei and took half of the army with him. Realizing that the coming storm could no longer be avoided, they joined forces with Sun Qin and met Cao Cao at the now immortal Battle of Red Cliffs, which stopped Cao Cao's advance and effectively divided China in half. But within a year, both of Liu Biao's sons were either dead or exiled, and Liu Bei was appointed the new governor of Jing province. He would use the infrastructure built by Liu Biao to create the kingdom of Shu Han and continue in his cousin's footsteps as a wise and courteous ruler. China is beset by conflict and you must restore order. Liu Biao, the governor, the true aristocrat, is a man who views wisdom and experience as the sword and shield with which to protect the realm. Liu Biao is the choice for those who seek clarity of thought, knowledge, and the wisdom to make the right decisions to bring peace back to this chaotic land. And as earnestly as he hopes that the chaos will abate and reason will again prevail, the times are changing, and Liu Biao must find his place in this new land, or fade forever into the mist of the forgotten. Total War Three Kingdoms releases on March 7th and is available now for pre-order. You can subscribe to see more Warlord Legends in the future, and as always, thanks for watching.